Um, Max has got an interesting history, and it's all tied up with its development at IRCOM. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first time I saw it, uh, I was at IRCOM. I don't remember exactly when this was. This would have been in the 80s, mid middle 80s. And it was running on a uh, Next Cube using uh, signal processing uh, hardware and software, uh, signal processing hardware called the ISPW. And it did, it did signal processing as well as MIDI. I was much interested in the signal processing, but it was very expensive. And the next cubes were tricky. Well, uh, Earcom then released a version of it that uh, just did MIDI and ran on a Macintosh. At that time, a Macintosh was incapable of doing signal processing. It just wasn't fast enough. And even the next cube couldn't do it by itself. It used these uh, cards that plugged into its uh, expansion chassis to do the signal processing. Signal processing requires a lot of computational power. The Max didn't have it at that time. Neither did the next cube. Um, shortly thereafter, IRCON turned it over to a company called Opcode who released the Macintosh version of it uh, commercially. And again, it controlled MIDI. It is essentially a programming language. It's a visual programming language. And what you get are a, a whole series of, of little objects which in and of themselves are computer programs that you can connect together visually using these little things they call patch cords. And so if you're looking at the screen, you see all these little boxes connected by the patch cords. And as time went on, um, Opcode released more and more uh, workable versions because, of course, the difference between research software that would be at a place like EARCOM or MIT is that it doesn't work all the time because it's, it's not intended to work all the time. It's an experimental platform. And software that has commercially released is that commercially released software, the expectation is that if you pay money for it, it works. So Opcode cleaned it up and they made it commercially viable and they continued to support it until they were bought up by Gibson Guitar Company and went out of business. Then the rights reverted back to Earcom and they turned it over to uh, one of the original authors, David Ziccarelli, who uh, came up with a company called Cycling 74. And he's been maintaining and supporting it and all of its, uh, its, its, its progeny since those days. As the Macintoshes became more sophisticated and faster and had faster processors, then they too could do signal processing.